So this is very transparent. We're going to walk into my house with her. My four dogs are all crated. She has not met them yet. She has not seen them yet. See how it goes. But the key is I practice the place command her outside. My dogs are all e-collar trained. Two of them have the e-collar on. The other two I don't have to worry about at all. But we're going to go right to place family. I might have to correct her with the leash. Okay, we can film live. We're going to go right to... Okay. Now, dog energy, no, it is cumulative, it's contagious, so if I let my dog escalate, of course here, she's going to escalate, but same, same expectations as when we're outside, okay. no, Sasha, now my dog is very conditioned to no, so they know if they, if they don't listen, they will get a slight correction for that. Could be e collar, could be doggy dog device, which I always carry on me, just a static sound maker. You can see a good film. I have a dog here, a dog there, and Sasha in the crate here. I got Agatha over here. Now they've never met her. Okay, but I just walked this strange dog into my house with my four dogs. I'm pr very proud of her, too. Okay? Now, I wouldn't have done this the moment you came, right? I worked with her on the leash, with leash pressure. We worked on place command outside, okay? She knows the rules are holding place. So everything is very, very structured. So now I'm going to walk over to this place. I'm going to grab that remote. Okay, so I'm going to grab the Sasha. Place.
combination, like when she was fixating on Sasha, I would just give a slight pop away from it. That's the way the prong should generally work, where it's pressure, release, pressure, release, pressure, release. Okay, but to help guide them into position, it would be consistent pressure until the command is completed with the slip and the down. Okay? And I'm going to walk back to this place one. And I might stop before I do. Wait. And I might ask her, so here, I'll demonstrate the sit again, which would be a real struggle. She's off the place, she's between the two dogs. So I'll ask for it, sit. And if she struggles here, pressure, pressure, okay? Now she's still struggling to listen, so I'll push down on her butt like this. Okay, and it's not forceful, it's gentle. See that? Gentle. Now this is really distracting because she has food in there, this dog, right? But notice how she's behaving, okay? She's being respectful. If she went for my dog suddenly, then I would give her a correction, not constant pressure, okay? Let's go. Place. Good. And now I'll ask for it again. Sit. Waiting. Give her a second. Now you notice how I always follow through. So if she's not listening, I let the leash angle too long to hit her neck. So, so a question is, so a pop for over fixation? Right. Fixation, that's a good question. Over, if the dog is fixating, it's going to lead to escalating. So, and now there's a difference. I know as a trainer the difference in the stare. I can tell she just looked at Agatha interestingly, not that like built up. She's getting pressurized, she's aggressing, and she's going to explode. That is too late. Then you correct that at the first sign. But she's just looking at my dog. I don't have a problem with that. I can tell she's not, you know, in that escalated state. But with Sasha, Sasha's a little different story. Sasha will go from zero to 100. Sasha's my dog who was in the shelter over five years with serious dog aggression issues. So a lot of times even with Sasha, if you film Sasha, I said, Sasha, sit. Okay? I'll ask, I'll give Sasha a command because the, if I let her stand in the crate, that's the first sign in the escalation and then she'll start to escalate. Okay? And notice your dog here is just doing fantastic, holding her place command. And again, all petting I do is calm. And she's not nervous and neurotic right now. You get what you pet. So I'm not going to pet her if she's whining or if she's acting aggressive because then you're reinforcing it. That's how you would train a dog to be a calm, a protection dog or an attack dog. And I don't do that. I work with pet dogs. Okay? Let's go. Wait. Let's go. Wait. And I expect her to, wait, to just wait where I want and then the pressure comes off. Now go back to place, use my body. Place. Good. And then look, she goes into a DOWN on her own. What does that tell you? She's getting comfortable here. Okay, she's getting comfortable. I don't personally do boarded trains. I can't. I have a full-time job. And I have my own shelter I'm running here. But if you go to an effective boarded train, if you have a dog who's really, really struggling, these are the activities they should be doing with them daily around other dogs, just getting them to peacefully coexist and build their confidence. Look at this. So, anybody who watches this later on, this was live. We did this live to tape. I'm going to post this in a couple of minutes. But, they could have went really south, but I have confidence in my abilities, I have confidence in my dogs, and I have confidence in how good